Beating up the tail. Grip the mouse by the base of the tail. Lift it up and carry it to the new destination. Copy. Cup or scoop the mice onto the gloved hands, then loosely close the hands around the eye hole. Preferred for transferring mice over a long distance. Grasping the loose skin of neck. Carefully but firmly grip the base of the tail of the mice with the dominant hand. Lift it onto the cage top or on the rough surface. Gently pull the tail backward as the animal tends to move forward and to hold onto the grid with its four legs. With other hand, firmly grasp with the body thumb and the forefinger the mouse by the loose skin over neck and shoulders. Quite close to the ears to prevent the animal from turning its head and biting into the handler's fingers. Grip the loose skin extending over the back with the other fingers. Be careful not to impair the animal's breathing and venous blood backflow from the head to the chest. Turn the hand upward so the mice is positioned with its ventral side up. Secure the tail by gripping it between the ring or small finger and the ball of the thumb or holding it with your other hand, whichever is more comfortable for the hand. By using a tail first restrainer, lift the mouth by the base of the tail and then place in front of the open end of the tubular device. Introduce the mouse backwards with its tail being gently pulled along the open longitudinal slit. Slide the head button into the tube up to the animal's head in order to prevent the mouse from moving forward. The animal is now ready for further manipulations, in this example, blood collection. Restrain the mouse using the one-hand scruff technique by the neck with the head and body at 90 degree angle for ease in inserting the gavage needle. Insert the straight gavage needle appropriate for the size of your specimen in the space between the left incisors and molars and gently direct it caudally toward the right ramus of the mandible. The mouse swallows as the gavage needle comes close to the oropharynx to facilitate entry into the esophagus. Once the entire length of the gavage needle is inserted, inject the solution slowly and withdraw the gavage needle. Note to never aspirate the liquid. Subcutaneous Injection Handle the mouse firmly by the scruff using one hand. 
swab the injection site with a sterile pad and alcohol. Lift the loose skin of the shoulder or back with your other hand. Insert the needle 5 to 10 millimeters through the fold of the skin created by your thumb and index finger. Aspirate or pull the plunger before making the injection. Inject the solution slowly. After injection, withdraw the needle. To screen the mask using the one-hand scrub method, then swap the injection site with a sterile pad with alcohol. Insert the needle at the right lower quadrant of the abdomen at a 30 to 45 degree angle towards the head. Aspirate to check if you are in the peritoneal cavity. If neither urine nor intestinal contents is withdrawn, proceed with the injection slowly. Intravenous Injection Restrain the mouse with the aid of a tail-first restrainer. Warm the mouse using a lamp to dilate the tail vein. Disinfect the tail with sterile pad with alcohol and dry it with a sterile pad. Insert the needle at the caudal one-third of the length of the tail through the skin and into the lateral vein. Blood will be visible at the base of the needle if the needle is in the vein. Inject slowly. Take note that the blue-colored vein becomes a clear during injection. Withdraw the needle and apply pressure using sterile cotton with alcohol to stop bleeding. Intramuscular Injection Restrain the mouse with the help of an assistant. Extend the hind limb. Disinfect the fine muscles, which are a large group of muscle exteriorly located, with sterile cotton and with alcohol. Insert the sterile needle into the thigh muscles. Be careful not to insert the needle deeply because of the risk of hitting the sciatic nerve. 